So, uh, thanks for coming to this session. The idea of this session really is a chance for you to see some uh, some real life uh, Civi CRM users and uh, have a look at their sites and ask them questions about their experiences with Civi CRM. So it's great to have everyone here. Let me just quickly uh, introduce our panel. So we have Daniela from Endometriosis UK, <laughs> <laughs> Alex from Cole from Cambridge University, uh, we have Joe from the Photographer's Gallery, and we have Steiner from Math Norway. Ideally, we'd have a nice luxury big sofa up here and, uh, <laughs> you know, be a very classy, but um, this is what we have. Um, so, but do you want to, um, it'd be great if you guys want to just talk a bit about, initially, about your sites and what you do, and maybe show us a couple of pages just to give people here an idea about what it is that, uh, what it is that, that you do. Should I start? Okay. Yeah. So I'm Jo from the Photographer's Gallery, and if you don't know the Photographer's Gallery, it's a public art gallery in London, and it started in 1971. So um, I'm the, well, my job is to look after the website and um, the audience. So what we wanted to do is that we wanted to integrate, because you can imagine we started in 1971, so you can imagine how many different databases and systems we have. So the idea was that we'd bring everything into one place. So we'd had previous projects when we'd worked from the website and we'd worked with um, proprietary kind of database and things like that. So what we wanted to do, instead of starting with the website and then building the databases, we wanted to get all our databases together and working and have a really, really tight system. And this was everything from email, shop, finance, you name it. We wanted everything in one place and then from there we'd build out. So about, about a year ago, I think we started looking, and we ended up, um, I, I, the thing is, I work for a public gallery, so you want to be open, it wants to be open source. I can't find my tag. Um, it might be in another. Okay, so we wanted to be, so it feels right, but we did go through a big tender process to kind of like get to where we were. So I can't find my Okay, I'll start again. Okay, brilliant. So, okay, so this is, this is our website as it is. And so this was um, launched in 2012. I've sort of jumped, apologies for that. And so, as I said, what we wanted to do is we wanted to replace everything inside and then get back to the website and rebuild that. So this is, you, you know, this was built in 2012. It's got, you know, it is, it is what it is. So what's happened is that we're building, as I said, all our databases together. So, so where we are is that in um, the 16th of July this year, our events module went live. And so we were in this really interesting position where we've got this website, we've got this events module, so how do those two things interact? Um, and so basically what we did, oopsie. Um, the way it all worked, oh I can't do this, all right. It's just, the way it works is that we've just got a really clever little bit of HTML that was given to us with a link. So our main website, which is a completely different system, so if you go through here, and as a, as a member of the audience, you go and you want to book something. So what you see is a very, very, very nondescript book now button. It fits in with the site. But what it is in the back end, it's just like a nice little bit of HTML, um, which is embedded in here, which takes you to the Civi site. So basically what we've done is like bit by bit, we've got, we've kind of changed our events over and that's now with Civi, but things like the bookshop is still within the existing system. So that's kind of like where we are. So okay. I've probably gone on too long. No, yeah. but that's, so it sounds like, so you're not using Drupal or Joomla or WordPress no. for your website? No. we will eventually, but we're like most people, it's like we cannot get rid of everything all in one hit. We've got yeah. to use what we've got. Okay. So you have so you then so that so if, if we were to click on that book now button. Yeah, then so that that takes us to a, a CVCRM page. Yeah, completely. Yeah. That's it. And okay. so actually from the user's point of view, it's actually easier than it was before, but there's no real difference. Because that and what was really annoying is that when we asked it, it got quite complicated, shall I say, trying to integrate the two systems, but the reality is it's very, 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 very simple. Okay, great. Cool. Okay. okay. Beautiful chairs over here. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 
the That's not just me. <laughs> it's that one. The one just the okay. That's right. This one. You know it's probably it's probably this one. It's there. I found it. Sorry. Okay, you got it. Okay, so I'm from the University of Cambridge <laughs> and I'm responsible for um, two of the main websites we do, which is one for alumni and one for all the donations that come in online and sort of the bigger donations that come in from major donors and that sort of thing. Um, we use Civi CRM to power all of this and Drupal as a combination. And we've chosen to do that basically because it's so customizable and you can pretty much do whatever you can think of as long as you've got someone who can program it or design it <laughs> along the way. You can also do a lot if you can't program it, but we have the luxury of having two developers that work on this sort of full time. And we've put quite a lot together over the last couple of years. There's a lightning talk later on where we're going to go through the whole process, but I'm going to show you a couple of bits just now. So people come to the website and they want to update the details. We have this page here which allows them to log in with our third party email for life service. So we offer email accounts for to alumni for life. And we have 80,000 people that use those accounts. So 80,000 people can log into the website and update their details between the two systems. So that system is completely separate <coughs> to Drupal and Civi CRM, but we use the IDs to match them up when they log in. If they don't want to log in, we have that option as well. I'll show you this. And this is using Civi Web Form, and it basically creates a contact in our database with all these fields. There's a lot of them. <laughs> it, and most people fill all of them out, and it means that we can then get the details they've sent us, and using the tools within Civi CRM, merge those people into their actual accounts later on, so we match them up behind the scenes in Civi CRM which is a very good tool for us. I mean, in the old days, people used to get these forms filled out, they'd print it out, and then manually go onto the database and start typing it all out. These days, they just go to the merge tool and click merge, I want this field, that field, the other field, and move it across. Yeah. So that really helps us out. Um, and what parts of Civi CRM do you use? So we use profile forms, so people can update their details. We use um, event registration, so people can sign up to all our events, and they're very complex. And we use online donations so they can give us lots of money. And we also use the email marketing tool. Um, I'll show you how, quick. How many contacts do you have in there right now? About 320,000 people. So this is our philanthropy site. You can go on here and have a look around if you want to give some money to something. You can search our database. Go to business and management, and then we pull in using Drupal Views and CVCRM a link over to CVCRM to go directly to the Give Online page for that thing. So it matches the title with the title of a donation page within CVCRM and puts them together. And then you get a donation page, which again is quite long. The university seems to like collecting lots of data. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have opt outs and things on there that's all powered by CVCRM. So okay. any questions about that? Uh, yes, I think there's a, there's a bit of a learning curve moving from any system to any other system. But people want, it takes people about three or four days to sort of calm down from the change and just get on with it, <laughs> uh, we've found. So we've, yeah, and so we've also done it in stages. So we do one module at a time, so we've done events, then we did donations, then we did profiles, then we did email marketing, and so, and so on. So we haven't tried to do too much in one go, so the impact is less. And it's worked quite well. So as I say, three or four days of a bit of turmoil, and then it just goes back to normal, and everyone gets on with it. Right. <laughs> cool. um, Steiner, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah.
I'm Danielle M from Endometriosis UK. Um, my role at the charity is very varied. I look after the fundraising, membership, database, finance, admin, all sorts of interesting things. Yeah. <laughs> um, so one of the big differences for us is when we transferred from not having a CRM um, to having a CRM was the admin for our volunteers. We currently use a lot of profiles for the back end of our events. Um, I can show you our, one of our events that are live at the minute. Um, so we, there was a lot of, we found there was a lot of time spent from our volunteers, so sending fundraising packs out, um, t-shirts, the kind of general admin that's associated with fundraising. Um, so one of the things we changed initially was we scrapped the, our kind of paper fundraising pack and went for a PDF um, which automatically gets sent out once someone's registered for an event so they can they get they go to a page where they can download it um, which obviously saves time for us in terms of mailing it out and it saves costs but it's also they get it straight away um, I can show you some of the profiles that we set up around the admin so we can check when we've sent a t-shirt out for example it's very simple for us to have a look um, and run a run a search to see when, you know, how many t-shirts we need to send out per week. And it also means I can give volunteers tasks to do when they come in, so they're not kind of wasting their time searching for tasks to do. They can kind of get a list straight away of what they need to, to how do. How many people work at Endometriosis? Um, there's two of us full-time and five part-time staff. And we've got one office volunteer who comes in and sorts out all our check payments, which is great. My, um, this is really tiny. Sorry. It's alright. Uh, actually, let me show you. In that's fine. I've okay. just got my glasses in my bag. Let me <coughs> go to. Probably good for uh, everyone else I think, as well, just to see it a bit bigger. I'm actually just going to go to an event and check. Oh gosh, this is really weird. Uh, so I'm going to show you a, a participant um, and just the admin that's associated around. Um, if we've got anyone registered, we can have a look. And is most of the stuff you're doing fundraising? Yeah, so we've got a membership um, that needs some work. Once we figure out what we're going to do with membership, we'll kind of have a whole big plan um, but the minute it's fundraising we have a lot of people that do their own events for us um, so one of the things that was quite challenging when I started um, we the team that was in place before we kind of moved over just gave Ollie who created the Civi side of things for us a list of old forms so paper forms and said put this into the database which in theory for them not having kind of any technical knowledge kind of works to a degree but it meant because we have a lot of people fundraising their, for their you know doing their own events such as bake sales you know whatever and we couldn't they wasn't listed as, part, as a participant so they we had an activity created for them as opposed to an event so last year or this year I finally got around to doing it I kept saying that I wanted to do it and it's one of those things where just do it because otherwise you'll kind of never get around to doing it so I created an event um, it's still a web form, so basically people can register their event with us and we get can treat them as a participant as opposed to just being an activity, which is what they were doing before, which is a hell of a lot easier. Um, so let's have a look at this person. So... There are still a number of profiles that we don't <coughs> currently use as part of the um, part of my challenge for this year is to organise our profiles a lot better. Um, so this is kind of the, the back end, what our volunteers would see. So you can see they, you know, they want a t-shirt, the size of the t-shirt, and the second part is obviously has the t-shirt been sent, the date the t-shirt has been sent. So we can, act, if someone phones up, you know, we can easily check when the t-shirt was sent. I mean, it's all kind of basic stuff, but for us it was a massive, um, a massive leap to go from paper versions to this. Great. 
Okay. Any, any questions? Um, so they've got, no, we, we use Virgin Money and Just Giving. Um, so another challenge is getting the information. So within Just Giving and Virgin um, platforms, you can have your, um, I can't remember what it's called now. There's a link where you can put the CVID. So basically yeah, when you re-import it, it will go, yeah. So we got around to doing that and that was a massive. So we can actually import the, their fundraising targets into their, their profile. We do it on every every other month, not every month, so it's not as accurate because there's just no one to do it. But at the minute, it's it's every two months. And um, but ideally, we'd like to do it on a weekly basis because then yeah. their funds are in there straight away. How many people do you have using Civi at the moment? In the office, yeah, me. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, which is quite I'm quite lucky because I can I administer it as well. So if I see something wrong, I well, I can do it straight away. Um, we I'm trying to get everyone to use it. You know, to record activities when they have conversations with someone, because it's because the office is quite <coughs> varied in terms of who's in at certain times. If someone phones up, we don't necessarily know what conversation they've had with someone else. So, I'm yeah trying to encourage everyone to use it as often as possible. Okay, it's fine. Do you want to do a quick introduction, then we can get on to questions. Yes. Uh, my name is Steinar. Uh, I work with uh, MF. The Mission Aviation Fellowship. We fly small aircrafts uh, throughout uh, uh, remote uh, places in uh, Africa, Asia, uh, yeah, South America. Um, and in Norway, we actually just do fundraising. So, um, what, what CIVSAM does for us is just boring back end stuff uh, all the time. So, it's uh, for us. Using CIVSAM is, is all about uh, doing an eff efficient uh, office to, to have efficient efficiency at, at all the costs. Um, and uh, the one thing that is most important for us is our donor. So we want to communicate with our donors and do that in an efficient and personalized uh, uh, way. Uh, we have been using uh, time for two and a half uh, years. Uh, we have not integrated it with the website. Uh, so that's maybe the next step, but uh, we are using it, yeah, just to uh, communicate with our donors. That's, that's the main thing. And uh, we are also very active in automating stuff because uh, I think computers should do what computers are best at and people what people are best at. <laughs> so the computers should do the boring stuff and we should just monitor and, and yeah, get it running. Okay, yeah? great. That makes, yeah, that makes sense. <coughs> so I mean, you can see from our panel, we've got a, and as from what I know of our panel, they're kind of a really varied uh, range of organizations from really big institutions to organizations with two members of staff. And, it looks like you're all using Civi Serum in different ways. Some of you are kind of using the whole system, some of you are just using a part of the system. Um, and so basically what we want to do is just open it up to the floor. If you guys have questions that you want to ask, uh, these guys are here to, to answer them. I think if, we, if you have questions that are, are kind of of a, very, of a nature that each person can ask, then that's good, but also specific questions are, are fine as well, but maybe, um, we can start with some broader questions, if any, if any of you have any. <laughs> Very quick. Yeah. Um, some of you, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure how many of you have integrated SIPSIRM with their public website. Uh, well, some of you haven't. Um, I can't think of uh, Is there any specific reason, or is, is there an idea of uh, if you are going to integrate it? with the public website and why would you or why wouldn't you? Is there a specific reason why you think, okay, that's not really a benefit to, to, to me or do you have a specific benefit in really trying to integrate Civic with the public website? 
if that question makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it's pragmatic, as I was explaining with us. It's we're doing it bit by bit by bit. And like with most organisations, we just couldn't do everything in one hit. And the mistake, I don't think it was a mistake. I think as we did it before, it was a website and then trying to do the database and the online shop and this, that and the other. So now we're doing it the other way around. And taking um, just silly things like um, we've already kind of like integrated Mailchimp by you know the way people do these things. So I think ultimately it just makes so much more sense everything being open source and everything being in one system that's really <coughs> compatible as opposed to kind of like patching things the whole time. But with most people, most organisations, you either can't afford or you don't have the time or the capacity to do everything in one hit. And what's great, and I think um, you picked up on it, is this idea of launching bit by bit by bit by bit and that having those kind of like lots of quick wins and launching it like that and rolling it out like that makes so much sense for us or is making so much sense. Yeah, uh, is there a specific kind of order that you would say, okay, if, uh, if, uh, if you want to do this, uh, a nice order that would work for you is easy and easier. First, first focus on this, on that, on that, so. I think quick win get lots of people using it. Um, I'd be really interested to hear how the guys got their organisations involved in using it. So we had the events, that seemed to work for us. It was nice and quick and it, people got in and they started using it. Um, and then it depends on your organisation. So we have certain deadlines within, because we're a gallery, we have private views. So our next, one of our next big dates is going to be getting everything ready for the private view. So we have our mailing list and everything we run. You know what I mean? So your organisation will di dictate some of those deadlines, but um, yeah, but I think it does does help to have quick wins interspersed with kind of like the really heavy, meaty stuff. So you know, if you can show people that they can use that and how brilliant it is, and then as well as parallel to that, try and get the really kind of heavy stuff done. I think. What about the, do, you, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Um, yeah. we went all in. We started. Um, a redevelopment project for the website, which was done before I came on board, um, so I kind of inherited the, the database in its form. Um, so we launched the database first and was using that for about three months before the new website was launched. Um, and I suppose, you know, we launched everything at once, so if events, membership, donations. And for a small team like us, it was straightforward because there was only one big kind of launch if you like so there was only one time to mess up really so once that was out the way everyone could kind of focus on using it and okay. um, for, for the university we had um, a few different reasons for coming on board with the CRM and the order in which we did it so one of them was we used to use a lot of different consultancies and various other third parties to run our events and it was very expensive, very time consuming, the data was always dealt with manually after an event or during an event, that sort of thing. And we wanted to basically sort that out in one go so we could have one system that would support all of our events. So we just started with that as a task first. And um, basically Civic CRM therefore got into people's use, they used it, they found it was really useful, it, we did a really good job on that bit so that they we're very confident in using it, and that meant that we had free reign to start adding all the rest of it, um, and to try and start uh, basically whittling down all the other bespoke systems around the university. So, where the university works, everyone builds a new system to <coughs> do something different every day, basically. <laughs> and um, I spent the last six and a half, seven years basically taking them all down. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it sounds like you started off with things that. Um, were one, one particular thing and then you could show people the yeah. success of that and get them on board. Yeah. So, yeah, so the university doesn't like using open source software, generally speaking. They like to buy big proprietary systems, have the support guarantee there for the other big company, have someone else to blame, that sort of thing. And um, so it was going to be a step-by-step -step process to convince the university to come on board with open source software, which is only supported by in-house people and um, they may get run over at any point <laughs> and then there's no one to look after it. So. <laughs> The part of that process was also convincing them that this is sort of a bit of software that is supported by not just the two people in the office, but actually there's a whole community out there. There's a whole load of consultants that also work on this bit of software, and you can use them as well. So part of the process was trying to get that message across and doing it in stages, so it's not too big a change. Yeah, yeah I work in a not-for-profit. We would never have enough time or money to do whatever we want, so we need to prioritize. So it's not 
the first part uh, three floors, and then maybe later on. But it's all all back to the power there. Okay. The uh, interesting thing is that maybe later. Yes. So you're not kind of convinced that it's, or or is it just basically? Uh, that I don't know if we yeah, that talk. depends on the organization. Uh, okay. It's always software is always about people, and and how to uh, interact with the people that are using it and and how to do that. So uh, yeah, you you should not uh, rush it if you don't have the people on board. So it's too too late. Yeah. What other other questions do we have? Maybe uh, yeah. Um. So you guys, you, you all sound uh, as if you're the kind of champions of Civi uh, in your organisation. <laughs> um, I was I was wondering what your experiences were like actually getting other people in the organisation that kind of up to uh, of using Civi and, and whether there were a lot of things like hurdles you had to jump over or whatever to get people really into it. Who has a hurdle? We have lots of hurdles. So <laughs> <laughs> the university is built up of 150 different departments, 31 different colleges, and then a whole load of clubs, societies, and all that sort of stuff. And they all have their own systems. So one of the major hurdles is trying to coordinate a systems where the same people are in all these databases all over the place. And um, so we we spent quite a lot. <laughs> so the same the same data is repeated over and over again in different levels of quality and accuracy. Um, so we spent quite a bit of time, myself and the other guy I work with, John, who's here today as well, um, in a different session, but going around explaining and showing them what is possible with CBCRM because it's in our interest to try and get all these systems amalgamated so that we don't have to keep manually sending data between all these different departments and getting data in different formats and all the rest of it. So that's the way we've done it. We've actually gone out and shown people around the university. So, and as we've done that, more and more are considering it. So a couple of colleges are now on board. Um, a couple, one of the... The Cambridge Union Society is also on it, and rugby clubs on it, and there's a couple more now considering it. And we're also going to start rolling it out as a platform. We're going to offer all the other departments for free, so they can all come on board as well. So it sounds like you kind of have a little mini marketplace that you might be basically. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think as well, what's really important, all those things, and for us, it was the idea of quick wins. But also, it's understanding people's needs, and mm. they must feel that they're being listened to. So a lot of the issues are organisational. So it's not so you, you literally it's like sitting down and it's working through what people need and making sure they understand that you understand and that you can meet their needs. And actually, at the end of the day, it's going to make their life a lot easier. Mm. There's an awful lot of handholding because it's quite scary taking away someone's database that they've been using for years, and it's the one that everyone else uses. So I think it's kind of People need to feel that they're being listened to and understood. So it's there's there's an awful lot of kind of going around and sitting on people's desks and mm. yeah. listening, uh, as well as more formalised workshops. I think one. Yeah. Sorry, I was yeah. going to add one more point on what I said is um one of the other big wins for us is we used to use and we still do use a lot of proprietary software that costs us lots of money. There's lots of long term contracts that sort of thing, and if someone comes to us and says right we need this feature because it it's not in this software and it doesn't work or there's a bug we have to then go off to the proprietary software ask them how long it'll take it's about six months a year whatever with Civi we can say we can do that by next Tuesday and then mm. so that is a massive win the fact that we can change the software ourselves yeah. I think it's showing the benefit as well to, to staff that's what I found helpful um, is actually understanding what they need from the database and then showing them easy ways to do it and you can kind of see the spark light up in their eye when they kind of think oh that's going to take me an hour less so it's understanding and finding the time as well that's the, that's the biggest hurdle yeah so i mean that comes up a lot doesn't it people i know eric you'd agree with that it's not about the software it's about the people okay more questions yeah hi i'm amy hi. um i just wondered if you could all give an example of how by using civi it's made improvements to campaigns, for example. So a financial target has improved, or a response rate has improved, or an event has completely sold out, or there's some of those, because obviously there's a, there's a cost to the database, and sometimes you always have to justify it to your line management for that budget spend, and I just want to have some good ideas of some kind of top line, good news stories to kind of go in and say, that this organization did this. Mm. 
Do you have any stories like that starting out? <laughs> yes. Um, we have uh, uh, a big emphasis on thanking our donors. Mm -hmm. And um, we are now using an extension called Civil Rules that uh, automatically, automatically uh, sends out thank you uh, by SMS, uh, by PDF to the email or email directly if you just record the contribution. Um, and uh, usually it, it took uh, half, half uh, the time of a day of one, one worker to do this every day. Mm. Now it takes 20 minutes. <laughs> so that's, that's a huge uh, time, uh, time helper. Mm -hmm. um, another cool uh, thing we are doing, it's uh, we are going to uh, congregations and have events and uh, just before going to the event uh, we send SMS from the system um, when the CEO is at the event we are sending it from CISAM uh, with the CEO's uh, number and inviting them and they respond and they say ah this was great but sorry I can't come there or they come and they are so so happy. They they receive the SMS from the CEO. Ah, like, oh. <laughs> so so it's, it it really helps. It's just just an easy easy way, but uh, it helps to um, be more personalized in in your communication, and you can be closer closer to your donors. And so, yeah. are you addressing them in that SMS? You're addressing them by name, are you? Yes. yes. So you, yeah. 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 That's, I mean, we, we, we did that in a project uh, once where we, we text student leavers and we texted them by name and quite a few of them just replied back like it was their teacher talking to them like, can you pick up my maths textbook for me, I left it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 We did be, forward be, those SMSs, aren't they? Because the power is that if you could send SMS <laughs> form or email, you can use tokens and then, mm -hmm. then you can do whatever you want. And yeah. yeah. What's okay. the name of the extension that you use? Um, CV rules for the automation. Yeah. CV rules. There was a session on CV rules uh, uh, yesterday morning, so uh, if you want to watch the videos, then that will show you what we've done. But the extension is available for download, so you can download it in the space. We've, we've, in our development, we, we combined with and on the left side as well. And so we focused on fundraising, but it can be used for memberships. And basically what it does, it, it allows you to do stuff like if a contribution is added, add some, and it's more than 5,000 automatically add someone to the group. And if it does, hasn't donated for the last three months, then remove it from the group and put it in another group. Okay. Any other kind of hard figures that you can point to? Um, since putting Civi CRM live with our online donation pages and integrating it into the website better, all our donations have gone up 50%. So. That's what I meant. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For some reason it convinces people to donate more than the old system did. Right. Maybe because it looks slicker, maybe because it's more integrated, maybe it's cleaner. I mean, overall because we had more control over the system we could make it look and work better than the previous system. It's gone up 50%. Yeah. Well, we've taken twice as much money in the same period of time, basically. Oh, so 100%. 100%. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's great. So with, with us, it's more yeah. on the event side, is that people are actually signing up for events and they can see it in one place. Um, mm. We can forecast better as well, so we can get an idea of what events people are fundraising more for than others. So ours is typically our internal events, so our signature events that we kind of organise ourselves as opposed to the... British 10K places, right to marathon places that we have. Um, we also ask, as part of our pro of one of the profiles in the event, is how much they anticipate to raise, um, and that as well give us a sort of run-in total every month that we can check to see how much we think we're going to get in. Mm -hmm. so it's a good way to kind of budget and forecast without having to do too much kind of admin work. That sounds lovely. <laughs> okay. Any other questions people have? Maybe uh, something you're a part of Civi CRM you're struggling with or just about to start using and you have something that you 
you'd like to ask the panel? Yeah. I can. I have a. I've a question. I'd like to know how, uh, in terms of how you're getting support, who, who you're working with, and uh, how that works for each of you, and what what you've learned from uh, those experiences. Um, I love the community side of um, CV. So events like this, meeting other people, and getting advice. I was quite shocked coming from the events industry when people are quite happy to share information. You know. You know, I was quite expecting yeah. to be charged for it. Um, <clears throat> but going and seeing other charities and how they use Civi as well. I mean, I, I met um, Owen from Bloodwise last year at um, CiviCom, and he introduced me to someone that does finances in their organisation, and I kind of really got a lot of information from him in terms of what we could potentially use. Um, not, I mean, they're massive, so you know, they've got so many different systems and different procedures in place, but it just gave me ideas of how we can improve. I think that for me is the biggest part of it and being able to go onto forums, um, you know, and kind of do the research yourself. Um, I'm working with CompuCore in terms of the whole overall project, which has been great. But like, like I think I said before, we're only kind of like part of the way in, we've got about another six months. So I think for me, it's like you're saying as well, it's brilliant having a great agency, but also it's the community. Because with most of us, although we're probably seen as quite big, we're not, it's me and sometimes it's me and someone else. So it's really great knowing there are other people using it because what used to happen is that there was literally, if you're working with a proprietary thing, unless you're going to pay for it, it's very difficult finding people who are using it. And, you know, it, it's just really difficult. So it kind of like makes a huge difference kind of knowing that there are people out there using it and you can kind of like plug into those sorts of networks. So I think that is actually quite massive. And also it fits in with the ethos of the organisation. We're a public gallery, so going open source makes you know, it feels right. It, it's that kind of like ethically, it feels where we should be at. Yeah, we work with uh, Civic Hoop. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm from Norway, and uh, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think there are any other big uses of Civism in Norway. So we are uh, sort of small. So uh, we need to travel here, or we need to actively participate in the community. And when we do that, we get a lot back. But if we don't, then uh, that, then we wouldn't uh, get as much back. So it's all about how much do we involve ourselves in the community. And I think for us, the, the main benefit of City CRM and how we, who we've worked with is the core team. So we have put in about 50 different patches into core and different bits of features and stuff. And then that means we don't have to maintain them ourselves anymore. The core team then takes them on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's things, that we've, it's things that we've needed, things that have been quite important. Um, I think one of the major ones for us, just before a massive event this time last year, we noticed that the booking form didn't stop people overbooking places if lots of people were booking at the same time. So we put that fix in and got that sort of worked on in quite a short period of time. And um, now everyone gets to benefit from that, and we also benefit from that as well. So. Is there anything perhaps we could show you that you might want to see that? Well, um, <coughs> did you, um, did any of you evaluate other solutions um, prior to going with Civi CRM? And what was the main reason going with Civi CRM? I can take this one quickly. So, at the university, we have to go to tender. I think most companies in the EU have to. Um, <coughs> so we had we asked three different companies to do this about six or seven years ago, and at that stage, we chose someone else, and <laughs> we signed up with them. It did not go well, and we turned it off last week. <laughs> and Civi CRM has replaced it over the last couple of years. So. <laughs> Can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Legally obliged not to say anything. <laughs> I mean, we so. also went to tender. We went through the whole process. It took us about a year. I mean, we did it really seriously um, because you just have to. It's such a big investment for us. So we went down the proprietary, interviewed, interviewed, you know, everybody. And I think basically what it boiled down to was a combination of things: is that 
and the whole thing about having individual licenses and the costs and all this kind of stuff was just like, it just got ridiculous. It really limited us before we even started. And the other thing was, there were some, some of the people we interviewed were unbelievably brilliant. What they did was brilliant, but it was kind of like, we would have been such a small fry for them. We would have been so unimportant. And our needs, you know, it was much more about banking, it was much more about commercial stuff. So the kind of stuff that I'd be producing and developing which would have been unbelievably brilliant, just wouldn't have been quite so relevant for us. So it's kind of like, it was a combination of being of cost, absolutely, and also being tied into a relationship where they kind of like weren't really, wouldn't have really, we wouldn't have been that important to them. Whereas I think our needs are much more in this kind of community, and it kind of like, the alignment's much better. I, I inherited the system, so I'm part of the whole um, decision-making process. Um, I think, the main reason they went with Civic was because it was straightforward to use and integrate with the new website in terms of Drupal and having it all kind of function quite seamlessly. Yeah, uh, we had other uh, Norwegian systems that we could, could uh, try and we also uh, checked out some uh, English based systems. Uh, but the, f the thing is that since we are in Norway, we still need to customize it. And uh, okay, with CV we could customize it, but if we, we chose a, another international system, then we still need to customize it, but <laughs> we need to pay them for customizing their system. And that wouldn't work. So for us, it was either CVSAM or a Norwegian uh, company. And, and, and we com came from a Norwegian company. That, uh, that was the reason that we wanted to change. We wasn't happy with that. And do you use the CRM in Norwegian or in yes, the interface? Yes, in Norwegian. Uh -huh. And how, what was the translation like? <coughs> Did you have to do any work on that? Or? It was uh, 49, but I made it 100. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, so for those of you that don't, that don't know, so CV CRM is built so it can be uh, translated. But obviously, it's an in translate. It's not translating to all languages. Yeah, but one thing is the translation. But it's it's like the banking. Uh, out of the box, you, you could have yeah. uh, banking extensions and stuff. But we don't. Okay. We, we we need yeah, to sure. uh, talk to every Norwegian system. And yeah. and if we want to have that in a international system and <laughs> pay them for doing it, it's better yeah. to just pay it here. And maybe some other Norwegian comes along, and then we are. Yeah. Sure, sure. sure. Yeah. But then I just want to highlight, it sounds like what you've done is you, the 39% of the interface was translated and you went yeah. away and translated the rest, which I don't know if you can, I don't know how long, as you can imagine, is a, it's a lot of stuff in there and must have taken you a while. Uh, it, it's not so good. It's fine enough and, and uh, it's more of, uh, that was needed because we needed to convince our board that ah this this would work in Norwegian. Okay. But in mm -hmm. the in the everyday uh, need we we could do it English. It's it's no problem. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a mix between Norwegian and English because even though even though I, I'm translating everything, it's not always everything that is translated because it's not all those things that are uh, available for translation. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Related. Uh, are you all using a single language instance, or are you using a multi-language uh, system? So Sing single. 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 Yeah, yeah single. I was sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 or a multi-language kind of thing. Do yeah. yeah. you have different users using different languages? Is, it, is anyone here using Civi Serum in multiple languages? Wants to. Be a uh, temporary panel participant. Well, I know that it's possible in theory, but I haven't seen it in practice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, like, so you can't really encourage it. And the question is always do you do it in the city? Firm in the Netherlands, they use. Drupal side of things in right. a number of languages, yeah. but not all the office, but yeah. not the city yeah. back office. Yeah, yeah the, the, uh, my primarily kind of thing is the outside kind of thing. So yeah. if I have online 
for the store. Yeah. Um, and and that doesn't need to touch shipping. So no. what most of our organizations we work with do is uh, do the multi-level multilingual part on Drupal or WordPress or Jupyter, but not inside CP. Yeah. But you do, so you do have the option. You do have the option within yeah. CVCRM to to have public forms or backend forms in multiple languages, depending and on the user preference. I know that there have been organisations who have done that. Yeah. 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 It can. Yeah. So it does. It's there. I don't think it's not our most used feature. <coughs> and and done it well. yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. With the with the features that are used less, they're not as tested. But it's so. You know, you may you may encounter some issues with it, but certainly the idea that you can have a form in more than one language and have all of the um, the field labels for those forms, like on a donation page, translate into different languages, depending on the users, where they are, that, that is available. But in, in some cases, it's just easier to do it in your CMS and it makes more sense. So when you get around to the um, CV registration pages, You say that, but, but you can do that. You can do that. You can make the multiple multilingual activity. But the product pages. Yeah. thing is that it's, you, it needs to be top-down support in organisations and I think you need to kind of like secure that support and you need buy-in, you need organisational buy-in. So I don't know if I do things differently because you never can, but I think it's just, you know, just trying to perhaps get more top-down support. Um, I don't think I would have done anything different apart from be there maybe um, when data was being imported because that was is still quite a big issue. Um, I think you learn as you go along. I think mm -hmm. that's the whole beauty of it. Is that it's, you know you're learning to make every day. Um, yes, and that's kind of what we really get out of it as well. So you're not yet. Yeah, there's no kind of roads that you've gone down that you think if we quick on we made this decision earlier. Um, no, because I think you've, you've learned from that as well, and you can, I always learn different things, that different ways, because so many different ways of doing one thing, yeah. that actually you don't know what the right thing is until you try it, and then, okay, it doesn't work, so you move on. And without doing that, you wouldn't have known whether it was the right thing to do or not. Yeah, and I think it's also, it's, the system's fairly flexible, so you can, yeah. you know, like, if you, if you, a trivial example, you know, like, I added this as a tag, and then, oh, yeah. yeah, I should have put that in as a group, you know, yeah. we just 
select everyone with that tag and add them to a group. You know. It's not always that simple. But, um, I think the main thing I'd have done differently is Going back six years, I'd have pushed harder to use Civi CRM from then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right answer. Whereas I gave, up, I gave up too easily. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I've done anything differently, but what I, uh, what I remember I did was to have a big focus on the decision makers all the time. Okay. Yeah. So basically the same as what Joe, I mean, what I should say, it's more like understanding because I think it's that it's, it's making sure that everyone understands everything that you're doing, reporting back to them, making sure that everyone knows every step of the way what's going on because otherwise, it, you know, it's, it's kind of like a difficult, unless someone's gone through that process, they don't understand what's going on. And so maybe that's what I meant. And if, it, if you don't take care of your decision makers, yeah. then it yeah. will just fail. Yeah. But, and sometimes that's learning how, but, do you know what, sometimes it's trying to find the language that they need to hear things in. Because, yeah, that's it. Do you know what I mean? It's like understanding how am I going to, you know, what makes sense to you? So. <laughs> what about, are there any security issues that you've come across? I think, any, have you had any, something like that that you've learned from where maybe the, we had the site uh, security tested recently by a company in Cambridge, oh, okay. and they came back with a report that said there's no shocks, so nothing of any interest. Did they say, <laughs> anything, did they say anything else? Um, or was it, a, was it a specific to your site? Or it was, was specific it? to our site. They tested all the bits we'd built using okay. CVCRM and Drupal, and basically let them try and hack it for four days, I think. Uh, and so was that a penetration Yeah, basically. Whereas it's hosted within the university network on our own sort of virtualized okay. hardware and all the rest of it. Yeah. Is, it is the actual site available to the public? The site is publicly available. And then, and in terms of the, you understand the infrastructure of your site, um, is it Nginx or is it Apache? Or is it Apache. Okay. And did you follow any <laughs> the university has oodles and oodles of documentation on how to secure websites and web servers and servers and all the rest of it. So we follow all of that. We also have lots of rules in place that are Civi and Drupal specific. So for example, we block certain URLs and URL structures so people from the outside world can't get into the admin areas or the Civi CRM, like admin <coughs> screens, all that sort of stuff, unless they've got VPN access or we use a name and password to certain things. So it, we, we mitigated a lot of the risk by blocking a lot of the stuff from the outside world. And you said that the, 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 there was an actual pen testing team that did the work, and were they an external company or just a single people? Yeah. Or they were an external company, okay. and um, their job was to come into the university for four days and basically use whatever techniques they have at their disposal, and also read through the code and try and find loopholes and holes yeah. in it and that sort of stuff. Do you think you could share all of that <laughs> stuff, as in like, the work that was done and, how it, and the results of it in mm -hmm. some way, shape, even if we could anonymize it? So I think other organisations have also done this, but actually being able to release the information is a bit difficult because obviously if there is any security holes, or even if they're, my, <laughs> even if they're small, you can't release it so, yeah. until you fix them. So there's a, usually quite a delay before the information can be released. But the plan is to actually release anything we do know that we can release when we... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, yeah. Because obviously you have to respect, you know, you know your organisational yeah. privacy. But I mean, that's a, it's a nice idea. I mean, do you think they were a good, they were a good organisation? They were good... Hackers, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They did find a few different things. They did find a few bits and bobs within the system. Yeah. Which we've now plugged. So. Yeah. So it'd be good to know those. Like, if there were things that you guys missed, that could then be more, you know, uh, yeah. publicly made aware of. Yeah. 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 Kind of yeah. Our plan is to go by the security team and let them know, and then they can then patch the big core and then. Yeah. Basically. Makes sense. We do the same thing for Drupal, so we had Drupal tested at the same time, and we found a few there, so we sent them off to the Drupal security team. Cool.
Okay. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you.